this um like pink or I'm sorry purple and green are Halloween to me like very like villainous and stuff villainous whatever <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to the 28th episode of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is Tuesday, August 20th, and it's another 100 degree day or over 100 degree day here in Texas. Um, I actually tried to look up before I started how many days we've had over 100, um, like this August, and it's a lot harder to find than you would think. Um, since school started back, which was two weeks ago, because we're in our third week of school, sorry. <laughs> Since school started back, I feel like it's been over 100 every day because every other day I'm outside for Carline. And so I know what the temperature is. <laughs> but despite that, I have managed to either get a cold or like allergies or something. Um, and I'm that kind of like I don't feel 100%, but if I'm distracted enough, like I don't remember that I don't feel well, that's the kind of sick that I am. So we're powering through. I'm drinking tea out of my, um, as hot as it is, I'm drinking tea out of my Poly Studios mug. And this is the Erin Lane Bags um, mascot. His name is Larry, I believe. And he's wearing a unicorn um, outfit that doesn't fit and it's broken and it just says nope, which is so cute. Oh my gosh, but I love these mugs. I have um, three of them now, I think. Yeah, three of them now and I love them because they're so beautiful and they're dishwasher safe and microwave safe. So I really love that. Um, but I also wanted to show you, um, I love Plum Deluxe Tea. I actually heard about them through um, some audio knitting audio podcasts, um, but I love Plum Deluxe Tea and I get the subscription. So I get two of these bags every month, one with caffeine and one without caffeine. And they're a really a, like pretty small company. So when you, um, like one time I emailed them because I wanted to um, pause my subscription and I actually got an email back like from, Oh, I can't remember his name, but like from the person or it looked like it was from that person. And then um, another time I wanted to um, like change it so that I got, I think I was getting one tea a month and I wanted to get two, one with and one without caffeine. And so I emailed them and they're like, sure, we can do that for you. So they're really cool. Um, I love the loose leaf teas and I just have like a tiny teapot that I put in the microwave. And then of course, without the metal strainer and then put that in there and scoop a spoonful of tea. So this one is called Soul Warmer. I have no idea when I got this because my collection is piled up. I probably have like 20 of these bags unopened that I really need to start working through. Um, but it has that Rubos tea. I don't know how to say that. Apple pieces, cocoa nibs, orange peel, and other stuff that I something probably like flowers or something that I can't really pronounce, but it's really pretty and it tastes so good. I put um honey and also lemon in there since I'm congested. So all that to Whoa. say, oh, toaster, be good. If he barks more, I'm gonna stop it. But um, all that to say, I am, my voice doesn't sound that great. I'm so sorry if it's hard to listen to. <laughs> Hopefully it's not too hard to listen to and we're just gonna power through. Okay, so I do have a finished object this week. Um, it's not like finished, finished but it's done. Um, so these are my um, Shark Week socks. So I'm finally done with my Shark Week shorties. I believe this was the one I finished first. And so, yeah, it looks like I was here um, where this Progress Keeper was is last week. And uh, we had a lot of testing at school. And so I got a lot of the sock done. I think I did almost all of it at school. And then I did some of this, I remember I was knitting in the car, I think on Saturday while we were playing Pokemon, um, but it is all done. Obviously, I'm, when I weave in my ends, I'm gonna fix that hole. So yeah, I haven't even taken like the stitch markers out <laughs> of here yet. So I haven't taken out the stitch markers or woven in my ends and clearly I haven't blocked them yet. But 
they are done and they are a Christmas gift. So that makes me super, super early. Um, I have the label for this somewhere. Hold on. Oh my gosh. I'm so congested. It's horrible. Okay. This yarn is from the self-striping yarn is from Malia, who's Malia made it. And the colorway is actually called Shark in the Water. I don't believe you can get it anymore because it was for Shark Week or Sock Week, sorry. Um, but when she sent it to me, um, we just had called it Shark Week, but it is from Malia. And it turned out so great. And, oh, everything. I need a bigger table next to me because I have too much stuff. Um, this is actually the second pair of socks I made out of that yarn and I still have this much left So that's definitely enough to go in my scrappy granny stripe blanket So I will hang on to that and it will go in my little trunk and then I had a 20 gram mini For heels and toes and stuff and this is all I have left I think on the other sock I did do cuffs heels and toes and then on this sock I just did toes and heels and I barely had enough with 20 grams so it was really close, but I made it. So these socks are a gift. Whoa, sorry. A Christmas gift. And I did, um, started at the toe. I did 64 stitches and I think I did 76 rounds for the foot. This is for someone who is a 10 and a half women's, I believe. I did a fish lips kiss heel. And then to make these shorties, I believe I did 12 rounds of stockinette and like, maybe seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight <laughs> rounds of ribbing, or actually probably seven rounds of ribbing plus the super stretchy bind off, which looks like an eighth round. So yeah, those socks are all done. And I do actually want to finish and block them tonight so I can put them away um, for Christmas. Okay, I have been diligently working on my new shawl design. It doesn't have a name um, quite yet. There's some stuff in the works. Um, but it is out to testers and they are doing a beautiful job. Um, I had previously completed like a mock-up version of the shawl. So now that I have the yarn that I'm going to use, I am making the final design. So this is what I've got so far. I haven't shared a lot of details about this shawl yet because um, it's not coming out till September 13th. So I'm just going to wait a tad longer, but I do love how this yarn is working up. So this is long dog yarn and... Um, it's not quite as um, dark or muted as it looks for me right now in the camera, um, but it could just be reflecting off the green. It's pretty light and bright. It's got those neon speckles in it, and it is so, so cute. And the yarn I'm using for that is, is um, Long Dog Yarn, and she has these cute new labels. They're so adorable. And the pink colorway is called First Blush, and then I got a mini that's just called Evergreen. Um, and that is the green in here. And I actually have a third color. Um, I didn't bring it over, but hopefully by the next time I show this to you, I will have gotten to that um, third color so that you can see it. But right now I just have garter and texture and it's just a lot of fun to work on. So this is a triangular, um, slightly asymmetrical triangular shawl. Um, it is constructed in a different way than I've ever made a shawl before, but it makes it super, super easy and I think motivating. So again, I will continue to share more about that as it gets closer to the date, but that's definitely my main priority with right now. So let me take a sip of this. Since I finished a pair of socks, I was, I had an emergency. I finished those socks on Sunday night and then I was getting ready to go to, to work, to school on um, Monday morning and I didn't have a pair of socks. And so I grabbed a ball of yarn that I had already wound up, paired with a mini, like in a bag together and um, knew that I had to get it cast on before my morning duty started <laughs> because at school I'm standing in the morning for 30 minutes and watching kids come in and letting them like they're asking me if they can basically use the bathroom and I say yes or no or like hurry up or whatever so I'm just standing there for 30 minutes and if I don't have knitting now I feel like it's a it's uh, I feel like I've wasted that opportunity so it was an emergency and so yesterday morning was Monday morning I had my emergency sock cast on. Um, I put this in my really cute bag. I believe this is by the bay. 
I think it's by the bay. Yeah, you can't really see it, but by the bay yarn co. And this is my Harry Potter like house crest bag. And I put it in a Harry Potter bag because these socks are Harry Potter um, colors. So I have been like really in the mood for Halloween lately. Like I'm not ready to do like orange and black or decorate the house for Halloween or anything, but I've been like wanting to do, I don't know, Halloween stuff. So to me, this, um, like pink, or I'm sorry, purple and green are Halloween to me, like very like villainess and stuff, villainous, whatever. <laughs> They're like villains, because villains are usually green or purple. Um, so yeah, so the, this is really, really fun. And this yarn, I'll get the ball out. This yarn is from Lolo Did It. And I previously used this yarn for something else. I can't remember, but um, I think it was for a baby sweater. And so I had a ton left over. So I went ahead and set it aside for socks. And so this is Lolo did it in her everyday sock um, base. And the colorway is Polyjuice Potion. And that's a Harry Potter reference. Polyjuice Potion is the potion that you can drink and turn into somebody else for I think an hour. So it's used a lot in the books, in the movies. Um, so Polyjuice Potion, the green is a different yarn, a different dyer, and it was just a mini that I had. Um, so I started these yesterday and I've made a lot of progress. So I did um, like a few rounds on the cuff yesterday morning at my duty. This morning I did a few more rounds on the cuff and then this afternoon I actually had a training, a three hour training, and I got through the rest of the cuff and I decided like, I don't really plan, unless they're not for me, like these socks are gonna be for me because they were just an emergency cast on. <laughs> so, um, and I love this color. I've, I've wanted something for myself out of this color and I don't have anything yet. So um, when I make socks for myself, I don't necessarily plan like, it's gonna be this long and I'm gonna do this ribbing. I just like start casting on and like see how I'm feeling that day. So I was feeling a one by one rib. I did 20 rounds, um, which is pretty standard for me. And then I decided I wanted to try like a really, like not a no show sock, but like a really short sock. So after I did my 20 rounds, I did, I planned for 20 rounds here, but I actually did 21. And, and I, since I was in that meeting, I counted to 21. And instead of taking it back, because that would have been like, I guess not more distracting than me counting my rows, but like, I just decided to leave it. So 20, 21 on accident, but I'll make it match. And then I started, I'm almost done with my fish lips kiss heel. So that's why it looks really tangled, but we'll see if I like this length. I mean, I'll definitely wear it. Um, Winter here in Texas is just not, like, if I want to wear my hand knit socks out of the house or to work, um, if they're long, I'm actually too hot in them. So I'm hoping if they're shorter, um, I can still wear them with just, like, my easy, like, slip-on shoes, tennis shoes, sneakers that I wear to work, and I won't be too hot in them. Um, I got the cutest marker, um, Progress Keeper from Simply Serving. And it just arrived, I think it arrived yesterday, but I just got it out of the mail today. And the amount of detail in this is just incredible. I'm hoping that you can see it, but it's a pink, like jack-o'-lantern um, trick-or-treating bucket. And it's got, I mean, it even has the handle and it's got like all the candy inside and it has um, gold like painted on. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. Um, so since I'm feeling super Halloween-y with my Polyjuice Potion and my purple and green, I'm gonna stick that onto here to see how much I can get through for next week on my little vanilla socks. But yeah, that was an emergency. I just had to get those cast on so I wouldn't waste my morning duty time. So speaking of simply serving, I didn't just get that one progress keeper because it would be rude to let it travel alone. So I did get a few more and she always has those cute stickers on her boxes. This is the first time I got a big box and not just a little box because I ordered a few more markers. So that was exciting. Um, but these I got a couple weeks ago um, and just had them shipped together. 
but I had to get one more Halloween marker and Lindsay is just out doing herself lately. I mean, the amount of detail and like ideas that she comes up with is amazing. So this one is a another Halloween one. It's like a Halloween latte. It's It might be a pumpkin spice, I don't know. I actually don't really like pumpkin spice lattes, um, but this is so cute. It's got little like candy corns and the straw is like that spiral stripe with red and white and purple. I don't know how much of that you can see, but it is incredibly detailed and it's so cute. And again, they're really lightweight because they're polymer clay. So I'm not worried about putting that on my knitting at all. And then I went further than Halloween and I had to get Christmas stuff. She had Christmas stuff. So this is a Christmas mug. It's got hot cocoa and marshmallows and candy cane, a candy cane in it, plus a candy cane um, handle. And it again, so much detail. It is just so stinking cute. And last but not least, I got a um, peppermint toad. I actually already have a chocolate frog um, from her, from Simply Serving as well. Um, that's a Harry Potter reference. And I believe these peppermint toads, are, are they peppermint toads or peppermint frogs? I guess they're frogs. But these peppermint frogs are like a candy that um, in Harry Potter you can get on the trolley when you're riding to school. So that's another one that's Christmassy or not, it's, I love it so much. So, so happy to get those things in the mail. So I have a new um, f uh, thread, I guess, on my uh, Ravelry group, which is Love and Stitches. And that thread just opened up last week. It is called Ask Me and it is sticky. It is pinned to the top. So if you ever wanna ask me a question about knitting or crochet, um, anything like that's easy to answer on the podcast, I will answer on here. If it's more complicated, I might answer it like maybe I'll need to put, put it into a tutorial later on, um, but it's just a way you can ask me knitting and crochet questions, but you can also ask me um, questions that are not related to knitting or crochet, and I am happy to answer them on here as long as they are, you know, reasonable and not too personal. Um, so I do have um, a question to answer. So I'm gonna just reach down and grab my computer. Again, I don't have enough space on my table to put my computer. Um, but this question comes from um, username, maybe Ann Stye or Ann Stee. I'm not sure how you say that, but it's Jody. And um, Jody said, hi, love the podcast. I've been knitting for just about a year now. And while I'm enjoying it, I have seen a lot of gorgeous crochet projects that I'd like to try. I haven't done much crochet apart from doing a single chain. Do you have any recommended patterns or projects for a first time crocheter. Thank you, Jody. Okay, so Jody, I do because I was a knitter first and then I learned to crochet. And not only did I, like usually you kind of, if knitting, like if you learn knitting first and you pick it up pretty easily, then I find you're probably always gonna think that knitting is easier unless you just totally switch over to crochet. Same thing if you learn to crochet first and you pick it up okay, then you try to knit, you probably will find that difficult. Um, that's just my experience in, in myself and teaching others. Um, I especially had a hard time because as a knitter that throws my yarn with my right hand, um, since I am right-handed, I need to hold the hook in my right hand and therefore had to learn to hold my yarn in my left hand for crochet. So. Once I got through it all, I think it's made me a better crocheter and knitter, but it was hard at first. So I totally feel you. Um, I There's a lot of people that are crocheters that don't knit that say they would love to knit because they want to make socks. So if that's you, either way, if you're not bi-craftual, is that how you say it? Bi-craftual? Anyway, if you're not yet and um, you want to be like, now is the right time, you totally should give it a shot. Okay, so um, recommendations for beginning crochet patterns. So the very first thing that I remember making like from a pattern was a baby blanket. Oh, I meant to pull it out, I think it's right here because I actually made ha have made them since. So hold on, it's gonna be wrinkly. Okay, so I have this one made because I made it for um, somebody and then I couldn't get it to them for some reason and so it's 
it, then it, by then it was too late to give it to them. So now I just have this on hand. Um, but this is a tiny little um, car seat blanket. And as you can see in the middle, there's actually a hole that is on purpose. And that is, whoo, fluff in the eye. Um, ugh. Hold on, let me go recover from that. Okay, I think I'm good. <laughs> okay, so this is a little car seat blanket. I believe it's called the Sage set, and it is in a book that I'm not gonna say out loud because it has a rude word, but I will put it at the bottom. Um, but it has a hole in it on purpose so that you can put the car seat buckle um, through there and kind of strap this into the child. I um, don't have a child. <laughs> I have, I, my sister was a lot younger than me, so I have put a lot of kids in car seats, um, but I believe you would probably um, keep, obviously keep the straps closest to them and then you could just like feed that part that comes between their legs through and snap it there and then they would be like trapped in. I think, I don't know. I don't know what car seats do nowadays. They're so fancy. Um, but this was a really good, like while it wasn't the very first thing I ever crocheted, I had to go through that like making swatches, making really like crazy things that didn't line up. Um, this was a really good first project because it's all double crochets and stripes. Um, and then by the time you have done all that and you come around to do a border, this looks like single crochet. And then um, this was like doing some chains and skipping and stuff so you could feed that braid through. Um, you were ready for it. Um, so anything that's really simple like rectangular or square that has maybe just one stitch, I think is gonna be a really good first project. Um, actually, my lunchtime napkins, which are free on my blog, it's, it's literally just a rectangle that's half double crochets. That would be a perfect way to start and just see, can, can I stay um, with the correct stitch count for the whole pattern? It's like this big, I use mine as coasters. That would be a really good, easy place to start and just get that practice in while still making um, something useful. After that though, I do have a recommendation for you. So again, this wasn't the first one I made, like I made this one about a year ago, but I, I've made several of them and that's just a really good first project. You can get that book, I'm not sure if it's still in print, but I would always get it from the library and make the pattern from there and then return it. That's totally okay to do, it's not a copyright infringement at all. Okay, so after you have mastered that, maybe you just wanna do a small coaster. I have another pattern um, for you, Jody, because I know Jody is a knitter, and so she probably um, has some yarn, or I'm sorry, she or he, but I think, I think it's a she, has some yarn and um, in your stash that you might want to use. So let me show you one other thing. So for when you're ready to like step up to that next level, I would suggest making this shawl. And this is a super popular pattern um, by Tony Lipsy, who's TL Yarn Crafts, and this is the flat iron shawl. So this is my crazy rainbow one. It's a triangular shawl worked from corner to, to I guess like skinny end to long end, skinny end to long end. Um, and it is all single crochet. Um, you can also do that little um, edging that comes with the pattern. I made a, this was actually my first one that I made. Um, I did not follow the color um, sequence, but I did follow the pattern and then I just didn't add that edging. I just did a straight edging and I love both of them so much. Why I think this would be a really good pattern for like after you've practiced your stitches and you can keep a consistent stitch count, this is gonna give you like just an extra challenge. You're gonna be doing increases and decreases, but it's all single crochet. So it shouldn't be, um, once you can keep a stitch count, like it shouldn't be too much more, but just enough of a challenge. And it's a big long project. So like you're working the same two rows, I believe after you get the setup done for like the entire thing. So it'll be really, really good practice. So again, these are the um, Flat Iron Shawl by Tony Lipsy. And she has um, a lot of other patterns that are really good and simple, just like classic um, crochet looks that are great for those um, advanced beginners like ready to try some new things. 
Okay, I'm going to move into some kind of love and stitches news here. So I have a new video series that is finally started. I am so excited about it. And it is actually two series. So it is the basic knits series and basic crochet series. So the intro videos for both of those series dropped today. So they should be out. I can link them below as well. Um, but basically in the intro video, I just talk about what other kinds of videos are going to be in the series and I also talk about gathering up materials if you're going to learn to knit or crochet. So I guess I should explain <laughs> that these videos are going to be all the basic stitches for knitting and all the basic stitches for crochet and there's going to be a different video every week and it's going to be really broken down so that in one video is just one skill it's going to be short um i'm aiming for around like five minutes or less but some of them might be a little bit longer because i'm including um like for the knitting ones for example we'll have both using straight needles and circular needles um as a beginner even though like as a, a more experienced knitter you know you pretty much are doing the same thing with straight needles versus circular needles it can really help beginners just to see it just to see how you're holding things so i'm trying to break it down in a bunch of different ways um but just to run through it really quick the um, basic knits series is going to start with the slip knot and then um, long tail cast on the knit stitch the purl stitch and then knitting and purling combined I'll be showing those, like I said, on straight and circular needles, but also um, I'm, I'll be showing the stitches English style, which is throwing, holding the yarn in your right hand, and continental style, which is picking, holding the yarn in your left hand. These are not the only ways um, that you can knit, but these are two ways that I use myself. Um, then for the crochet, um, it's gonna start with the slip knot, same video, a slip knot, and then the chain stitch, a single crochet, half double crochet and double crochet. And these videos are gonna be shown both right and left handed. Um, so hopefully that will be really, really helpful for those of you um, who are left handed. I know um, having some friends that actually knit left handed, um, you get left out a lot. So um, hopefully that will be helpful um, for uh, new crocheters. Um, I, when I decided to do this series, I really was doing it for my students because I'm going to have my after school knitting and crochet club starting up soon and it's just a great way like I can say hey go to these videos at home I'm going to be using the same words do showing the same things and that will help you until I see you again the next week sorry about that I must have somehow had my phone unlocked even though I kept it on do not disturb I got a phone call somehow I don't know how that happened um but not important so I'm not sure where I was but um, I knew that making like a, a video series of beginning stitches is not a novel idea. There's thousands out there, um, but I've already had like lots of encouragement from you guys saying that you're excited to see, um, you're excited for this series because either you want to learn um, to knit or crochet, you do one or the other, um, or you have like somebody that you know that's going to be learning to knit or crochet or that you would point them towards my videos. and. I just have to say thank you for putting your faith in me um, that these videos are going to be helpful. Um, I'm, I'm really excited um, to keep on filming them and I've got the first few already done, um, but I'm really excited to like keep on going with those and you've given me a lot of encouragement for that. Um, so I actually have a new um, little gadget that I got. I've been having some problems with um, the air conditioning <laughs> being in my video not invited not a guest um you can you might be able to hear it now it is on um but for my podcast i like to just film i, I use my phone my iphone and i just use the speaker on the iphone it does a pretty amazing job um but for tutorials when the camera is not like my camera is flipped as a selfie now um when the camera is flipped the other way you might notice your sound actually changes and it doesn't always pick things up as well Plus for tutorials, I want my voice to be really, really clear because I'm trying to explain um, how to do something and I don't want somebody to be like, what did she say? So I actually got a mic. So I have one of these little clip-on microphones that just like clips right here to me. Um, it is six meters long <laughs> because I could either get it be to be a meter and a half, which I wasn't sure would like 
I want I had to have it like go around where I was filming or I could have six meters so we went with six meters <laughs> it's super long um, but this is just a really simple mic I got on Amazon it plugs into my phone I have a phone that does not have an audio jack so I got the lightning cable but there is an audio jack version if that's the way your phone is um, but it looks like this um, the brand is Ye Ching, Ye Ye Ching or something like that. I got it on Amazon. I believe it was about $30. Um, and it was less expensive if I got a shorter one. And even cheaper if you got the audio jack version. I, I just can't do that with my phone. So I felt like this was a worthwhile investment in my tutorial videos. So um, not my very first videos that are coming out next week for the Slipknot, but the ones after that I have recorded using this. And you might not notice a difference, but I can definitely tell the sound. Um, I actually, when I record my tutorials, um, people like to do it different ways. Some people record the, the video version, the visual, and then later they go back and add the audio component in so it's all consistent and very easy to hear. Um, for me, it works better to actually talk while I'm doing it. Um, so mine are most, for the most part, not voiced over. Um, so what, what it actually does is when I'm recording with this, it makes it sound like a voiceover, like I was in a different spot and recorded it very clearly. So I really like how that is sounding. Hopefully that will benefit <laughs> everyone watching my tutorials. Um, whether you notice it or not, hopefully it is a lot clearer, but I was excited to get that this week. Um, okay, now I have something exciting, one second. So a few weeks ago, I um, hit a milestone here on YouTube, which was a thousand subscribers, 1000 subscribers. And I was so happy to reach that milestone. It just, it's kind of like un unlocks some things for you um, as a YouTube creator. So it was really, really exciting. And I could not um, do it without you guys watching my videos. And I, it is just really exciting for me. Um, and then I had a dyer really generously ask um, to donate, or not donate, but give yarn for a giveaway. And it just happened to be like right at the same time I was reaching a thousand subscribers. So I thought this will be perfect. Um, my first giveaway on YouTube can be my 1000 subscriber video or giveaway, my words. Um, and I'm going to get to give away some yarn. So let me show you the yarn and then I will tell you how to enter the giveaway. So um, this yarn is from Uprooted Fibers and definitely go check her out on Instagram. You can follow the link in her Instagram profile to her shop, I believe. Um, but she is just a really beautiful dyer. This yarn that I'm looking at here is so, so pretty. She sent two skeins to give away to you guys. So one of you is going to be a very lucky winner. Um, so let me show you the yarn. So the first, they are both fingering weight. Um, the first is a two ply. It is um, 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. And the, this colorway is called Wayward Sisters. And it is super, super beautiful. The second one is um, also a fingering weight, but it's 100% superwash merino, and it is a looks like a three ply. I love this color. This color is called Snow Sky, and it's so pretty so so pretty so even though these are not the same base you could definitely use them together because they are both fingering weight if you would like to so these two beautiful skeins are going to go to one lucky winner for my 1000 um, subscribers giveaway um so in order to enter it's going to be hosted here on youtube um, on this video specifically i'll give them away next week um, so all you need to do is make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and then just leave a comment down below. If you would like, go ahead and go over to Uprooted Fibers and give her some love. She's got her um, Instagram page and then I believe an Etsy shop, which I will link down, um, I'll put down here and link below. Um, but just to tell her thank you, you know, go give her, um, go check out her shop. Um, but yeah, just leave a comment down below and I will pick from the comments um, before next, before I record the next episode next Tuesday. So today is the 20th. So the 27th. 
So on the 27th, probably at like 5 p.m. Central Time. That's what we'll say. 5 p.m. Central Time, get your comment on this video here and I will um, randomly pick a number and that will be the winner of these skeins. Um, we will keep this, um, you know what? I'll ship them anywhere. So if you're international, go ahead, enter. It'll be great. Beautiful, beautiful yarn. Thank you so, so much, Uprooted Fibers. Somebody's gonna be super, super lucky. I'm almost done with my tea. That's how long this has taken me today. My husband is like, I'm starving. <laughs> when are you gonna be done? Sorry. Okay, I am almost done though. I just have some life stuff that I'd like to talk about. So if you're here to stick around for that, I am happy to chat with you. So um, yes, I have been sick. Well, not sick, I don't know. Since Friday night, I've been stuffed up and like every night when I go to bed, I am just like sleeping like the dead, I guess, until the morning. I'm taking um, like cold medicine, but not like nighttime cold medicine, <laughs> just like daytime cold medicine. And I am like sleeping and not remembering. Like the other night I, I keep a, I always have a box of tissues next to my bed and um in like a really cute thing i love little cute decorations and um you know if you have a cold you might wake up in the middle of the night and you just feel your nose dripping and you'll grab a tissue well the other night i woke up like holding a tissue in my hand <laughs> i don't even remember getting one it was just automatic <laughs> but anyway so i've been feeling like this for a little while i don't know at what point i will like i'm not i don't have a fever i don't i don't know I don't know at what point I'll decide that I am, it was just a little, little something or allergies or whatever. I'm tolerating it for now. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Um, but lots of people have said they've had allergies. And so I am chalking it up to allergies right now. Um, so school has been going well. I actually had students, um, this is the third week of school. I had students um, like in my reading groups starting Monday, yesterday. And um, yesterday was just the first day having them. And today they're already like, are you picking us up today? Are we, are we meeting today? <laughs> so they're already so excited. And um, I don't know why I'm surprised. I forget every year how elementary school students, like they still love school and that's a really cool opportunity. So that made me feel really good today when they were excited to come to my group, even when they were super chatty and it was hard to get our work done, but it was, it was good. And so I am, I'm grateful that I am teaching at a school where the kids are excited to come to school and excited to learn. Um, so they're also asking me every day, are you doing knitting and crochet club this year? The kids that are in fourth grade, they, they were in third grade last year. They could not apply to my club because it's only for fourth and fifth graders. And that is mostly just to kind of limit the pool of kids because I do get so many that are interested. Um, I definitely think that third graders, eight year olds can learn to knit and crochet. Um, but there is something about fourth grade that the maturity level does for most kids tends to jump. And um, it's just their fourth and fifth graders are just um, they're, I don't know. And for most kids and not every kid, like I know there are lots of very like mature third graders and second graders, but for most kids, they can really do well in a group and learn a special skill like knitting and crochet. And so that just really works. So the fourth graders are asking when the club is starting, my fifth graders are asking, can they still be in it? Even though they were in it last year. So I've just got to get this figured out really, really soon. So they will stop bugging me every single day about it. Um, this weekend, um, we had a really busy weekend. I didn't get nearly the amount of knitting and crochet and love and stitches work done that I had planned because we um, spent a lot of time getting things around our house hung up on the walls. We have lived in our house since November and it has taken us forever just to get things like situated and um, this is our first house together so yeah I don't know it just took us some time I'm actually looking over the camera at um, a really cool wall ha wall hanging that I have that I promise I will show you soon um, but yeah we got some stuff hung up here in my yarn room 
There are only two things left to hang on the wall. One is a TV, which we need some extra help with, and two is a mirror, which I haven't bought yet. So I'm super excited. I can actually do the yarn room tour I have been promising forever. Um, but we also hung stuff up in like our living room, dining room, bedroom, hallways, and it just looks like a real home now. And so that was really exciting and fun. I learned how to use a like electric screwdriver and a drill. Um, and I'm now pretty good at measuring and hanging things that have two screws. Usually I would just eyeball it, push it in with nails. So I actually have some skills now. Um, and then I, I put on Instagram <laughs> that I was looking for some drawers to hold my knitted garments and shawls. So um, everyone has their own method of like knitted or crocheted like finished object storage and I have two things right now. I have a um, an over the door shoe rack, um, not the hard kind, like the soft kind with the pockets. And most of my like hats, accessories, um, smaller shawls, I roll them up and then I stick them in their own like little individual shoe holder. And that works really well. It's just, I need like more than one shoe holder because I have so many things. Um, and then I have bigger shawls and sweaters and for those, I also roll them just so they won't get folds in the fold lines as bad. And I have these like small plastic baskets that I just like set them in vertically. And that's been working okay, except that they were on a shelf that I now have shoes on. So I needed like a drawer organizer and I put on Instagram like, I've seen these mesh, um, metal mesh drawers, they're deep and they slide. I didn't say they slid. That was my mistake. I got a lot of suggestions for baskets that stack, but that's not what I needed. I needed drawers. And um, I got a lot of suggestions back. It was super helpful. But I, the one I actually was looking for was the one from the container store. And I think they're called Elfa, E-L-F-A. Um, and I think as much as I wanted to find a cheaper option, I think that's gonna be the best one for me. And it's not something I wanna spend my money on right now. So I'm just gonna hold off for a little while and get some other essentials around the house. And then I will um, look back into that storage. But if you are looking for closet storage or garment storage, you should definitely check out the Container Store's website and look for the Alpha shelves that are, um, the metal mesh because you can customize them. You can get like different depths and stuff. They're really cool looking. Um, they're just, they're expensive. And um, so, you know, you have to make sure it's something that you really want. But if it is something you really want, I, I think it's always worth spending, saving and spending money on something that's gonna last you versus just going for the first option that you can afford. So I think I'm gonna wait on that for a little bit because my knitted garments are in baskets. They're just on the floor now and they will survive. <laughs> um, speaking of clothes, I, ha I had a moment last week where I was at work and my work, I have work pants from Old Navy that I had all last year. And I was just feeling so uncomfortable in my clothes. They felt too tight. They felt too low. Like I was always having to pull them up and make sure that my like lower back wasn't showing. And I wear long shirts. Like I'm not wearing short clothes, you know? And I just was like, enough is enough. I'm gonna find some new work pants. And so I went on Target's website and put a bunch of stuff in my cart for store pickup and went after school and picked them up. And I got some new pants. <laughs> I'm wearing them right now. Um, and I decided that I would, um, I would get, I just didn't like the way that my clothes were fitting me. So I decided to get a um, larger size than I had bought previously. And I tried them on at home and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so much better. They are so, so comfortable. And um, they really are, I'm wearing them right now, like I said. Um, and they are way more comfortable than the other work pants that I have. But the problem is they're still not fitting me right because they're too big. <laughs> um, and this is silly. I should not be complaining about, um, it's not like a just me problem that commercially made clothes, clothes don't fit me well, <laughs> but I would love your suggestions. So I don't know if I can show this. It's definitely too short, but like these are obviously too big right here and they're falling down on me. 
Um, but this is, this is the size that I need to fit the widest point of my body, which is like my hips. It's very comfortable there. If I get a smaller size, it is not comfortable for me. Does that make sense? So like, I really just need like it to just come in like an inch right here and it would make everything else fit perfect. So I don't know, maybe I'm just getting the wrong size, but I think it's just like a, everyone is going to have this issue no matter what size your body is. It's, it's a lot about shape and like how you can find clothes that work for your body. That's why I wear a lot of like A-line dresses. They're really, really comfortable because they can be small up here and then they flow um, for the larger like parts of my um, body. So if you have any suggestions on where I can find pants, <laughs> I don't want them to be too low. I like them to come up to like just below my belly button. I don't want them to be tight on my hips or legs like my other pants are, um, but I also don't want them to look baggy, which is how these are looking. They're looking baggy. So I don't know, maybe I just need to find a different style that would fit me better or a different brand, um, but I'm super, open to your suggestions. You always give me really good places to go look for things. Um, I don't spend a lot of money on my clothes, like Target and Old Navy and sales are right where I'm at right now. So I'm um, just keeping that in mind, but I wouldn't say no to spending a little more money on a really good pair of um, work pants that I can wear a lot. So that those are the adventures of my life than this past week. Um, but let me make sure I got everything I think I did. So make sure you comment on this video so that you can be entered for the uprooted, um, did I say it? Yeah, uprooted fibers um, giveaway. These yarns are so, so pretty. You definitely don't want to miss out. Um, and that's it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys again next week. Bye.